Hey guys, I'm Callie Lewis. And I'm John P. Welcome to our WWDC wrap up. Yes, it's WWDC 2013. So, uh, oh, OS 10. Um, now, Mavericks moving away from the cat theme and moving to the California. Yeah, they made that theme. like a big deal. I don't care what they call it. Let's just see the new update. Well, no, it's a fun thing for the Apple community to okay, guess great. what's coming out next in that particular theme. I so. only care what they're adding feature wise. It looked like they're adding some catch up features. What kind of things were they adding? Finder tabs. Oh, God, that is the most necessary thing ever. And, you know, one thing they didn't show. They showed tabs for Finder, which is great. Uh -huh. But how about split screen for Finder? They didn't show that. Are they um, going to allow that? No, they Can didn't. Can I get one screen with on one side, you know, uh, two, you know, split screen, half the screen? Maybe right. I click on the C drive, and the other half I click on the D drive, right. so I can drag back and forth between the two. That is so basic and has been lacking for so long. Yeah, right now you just open two. Tab windows, oh, but two finder windows. Yeah, to, which to is a that. pain in my ass. <laughs> but anyway, um, the other that's thing good. in Finder Tabs. is tagging, which Ken is very, very excited about over there. Yeah, Ken's losing his mind over tagging. Me personally, I think I think you know tagging is not the right word. I think category is is more of the word, but um, I just don't think it works well for for files the way it does with let's say photos. Right. Photos. One thing you know about photos, they're all pictures. Now when you add a tag, you know, the tag has uh, a limited application. But when you talk about adding tags to files in an OS, those files could be anything. They could be spreadsheets, they could be photos, they could be anything. Right. You end up with a situation where, like we have going on on our blog and on occasion, you have so many tags, they're so diluted, yep. they mean nothing anymore. Right. That happens too often, and people have to be very disciplined, and most people are not that disciplined to continue the tagging process. I think the people um, who use tags are going to love them, and it's great to have them, but I think 98% of people will not use them. I'm probably one. not. I, I, I won't you use them. You know what it really is, John? What? You know what it really is? It's the... It's the advent of the flat file system, like in the, in the new version of the flat file system, where folders are irrelevant. You know, you can put, you can't, you can only put one file in one folder right now. Like a file, a file right. can only exist in one folder. Tags breaks that. That is true. Uh -huh. You can you can have That's a, a very tag, good point. Uh, uh, you know, where you could give one file five tags, where you could only put it in one folder. That is true. And that's what was revolutionary about Gmail as well. Exactly. Yeah. But I just don't see it working the same way for something like this. I see it working in mail. I see it working in. I've already seen it work in this. I've already seen it work, John. All right. I've already seen this work. But for the majority of people, you work that way. No, yeah. Was, Your we, mind works we made that way. This for like a law office. Like we did this for a law office so they can organize their documents. They would tag all their documents. And how long? Documents. Did that yes, I could see that with documents. Yeah. Because we're talking about a specific file type. Documents, photos, videos. Right. Right? But, I mean, how about all the other miscellaneous file types that you encounter on computers? Those are well, going to be irrelevant. It won't work for those. Well, you even tag those. You tag the documents that you actually care about. No. Well, we'll see. We'll see how many people use it. Uh, iCloud Keychain, uh, their version of LastPass or 1Password, uh, which the most disappointing thing here, of course they're going to release their own version, that's just fine, uh -huh. but the most disappointing thing is it won't be cross-platform, uh, there's no way they do that. Uh, so that limits the functionality of that, for sure. Yeah, I would never use it. I would never use something that locked me into one, because you know, for us, for example, we're sitting here with a... Windows computer, an Apple computer. What are you doing with a Windows computer here on this live Apple stream? iPad, Android phone. Yeah. You have to have something that's cross-platform capable. Yep. Uh, the MacBook Air moving away from the OS. Um, All-day battery life, they claim 12 hours on the 13-inch. 
Which would be awesome. Which they thought was not revolutionary, but they thought it was amazing. This is 12 hours. Yeah, there are a lot of PCs that there are, are 12 hours. There are many, many that do that. Um, Mac, Macs don't tend to get up there. But, uh, but I, I would love some additional battery life on my MacBook Air. Yes, I would. So. Absolutely. And here's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see the MacBook Air have an i7 processor that would go for 12 hours, which means really, you know, nine. Well, this is using the Haswell processor. Okay. Well, how does that compare? <laughs> Ken, you got any uh, thoughts on the Haswell versus i7? Oh, I love it. It's like... 20 to 30 percent more battery life for the same performance level than Haswell. So As an i7? Yeah. Oh, no. Haswell is a chipset, like the architecture. So there'll be a Haswell i7. Oh, okay. 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 Like, like, like the current Mac generation is uh, Ivy Bridge. Your generation laptops are Sandy Bridge. Yeah. You know, the next generation, the third, fourth generation is uh, Haswell. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we'll be able to get that with a fast processor and then a very long battery life. That would be awesome. Yeah. But also, one thing I didn't see, talking about the new MacBook Airs, is, and I know that they're not designed for tons of inputs and outputs, but a single Thunderbolt connection is not enough. It should at least have two Thunderbolt ports on it, but maybe they don't because of power requirements or something, but I'd like to see the MacBook uh, Airs have more... Thunderbolt connectivity. That'd be nice. Certainly would be like nice. Like at least two. Yeah. Because Thunderbolt's so important. And of course, the MacBook Airs that they did announce are not Retina display. So because uh, they would use more battery that life, wasn't I guess. Retina. Yeah. I mean, that was rumored, but not happening. One thing they passed over. And no touch screen. No touch screen support yeah. in the new OS at all, no. which means it will be a minimum of one more year, probably two or more years before. Um, any touchscreen support on Mac computers. Yeah, that's disappointing. I'd love to see that a little bit uh, sooner. Mm -hmm. But um, one thing they passed through pretty quickly, but uh, it was really cool, the new airport base stations. That was cool. Uh, 802.11ac. And uh, they also have room for a hard drive inside, so it dual purposes as a time capsule. Well, and I think they announced that when they were talking about the MacBook Air, so they were saying the new Air has AC in it. Yes. So that's excellent, because even if you don't want the MacBook, uh, I mean the Mac, the Mac uh, access right. point, you could use any AC-based access mm -hmm. point and get gigabit throughput yeah. for wireless on your MacBook Air, which is fantastic because... There's no Ethernet port. So if you can use that high-speed Wi-Fi, that'd be great. Mac Pro. We've been waiting for like three years for new Mac Pros. And they've just proven that you will <laughs> never get one. You will never get one. All right, here's the deal. So if you're, if you're not a videographer or a pro user, like we are a, a Mac Pro house here, but we've been uh, thinking about moving to PCs because... We felt like Apple was kind of leaving us behind with their Final Cut versions and the no releasing, uh, not releasing uh, new Mac Pros. Now they have, and we do feel like it is a little bit lacking. Um, the two things. So I, I tweeted out during the announcement, how do you guys feel? About half the people said, this is horrible for pro users. The other half said, why would it be bad? It, it looks awesome. But they don't seem, those people who responded, from what I can tell, don't seem to be pro users. So from uh, just a normal user, it seems great. Uh, and it does. It looks cool. It's this round, capsule-looking device. I wouldn't mind short. having one in my house. It's yeah. beautiful. It's fast compared to the current generation. It could, it could be really fast, really powerful. And it's gorgeous. And it's yeah. tiny. It's cool. You can pick it up from the, from the top. But unfortunately, it is uh, only expandable externally, not internally. So no room. They're moving all to SSDs. No room for three and a half inch drives. Doesn't look like to me. That's amazing. Um, so that's like if you look at how we have our current uh, Mac Pros configured, you can't do that. Right. We have like four internal three and a half inch drives. You know. Three of them are raided together, so we've got a primary, and then we've got a raid for the other three, and it provides a lot of internal storage. You can't do it with that. Now we, were having, some, now we were having some debates. Ken, Ken wants to... 
faster than he say that oh. It is faster than say that. So, so the big question is, will the external, cap You're gonna external expansion capabilities limit or increase like, our speeds? Like a little Thunderbolt Seagate Cannon is faster than our Mac Pro's internal drives. Like the one that we have already here. I'm I don't sorry. believe it. I'm like, I'll show, it. Uh, show it to me. <laughs> show me what happens when you hook up all, your, all of the machine's drives, all of, all of the accessories, and everything is sharing just that one uh, we don't I.O. We don't know how many different channels that they have going on for their system. Like it could, I don't think it's going to be one channel, because that would be weird. Also, where's the power coming from? That's if you want to put four different hard drives in that machine, they're not going to daisy chain off those. The uh, Seagate thing we have doesn't need external power. You cannot daisy chain four hard drives together and all have them suck power out of one Thunderbolt cable on that yeah. machine. You can't do it. You're going to have to plug them all in individually. We're going to, what? Hook it up to a Drobo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hook it up to a Drobo. Um, we're going to have to see more about this device before I'm not going to buy it. I'm, I won't buy know, it. Absolutely no, but uh, it doesn't look like, you know, from our perspective that it would be the ideal situation for pro users. And I've seen a lot of the pro users talking on Twitter uh, for the same same reasons. Yeah. Uh, so that's disappointing, but no release date or anything like that. It's kind of a uh, just a preview, he called it. Yep. Uh, moving on to the iCloud. Uh, they showed off iWork on the iCloud. A great bunch of features. It looks um, like they've added some cool new features. That a great well. bunch of features for a cloud based service. Yes. And to catch up with features on other competing cloud based services. Yeah. But apparently, no updates for iWork that you would download and use on your Correct. machine offline, which was already more powerful than the online version. So, But also they can, showed off that it does work on Windows, so it's cross-platform that's nice. because it's cloud-based. That's the only thing they do that's cross-platform, <laughs> but yes, that's nice. <laughs> um, but I, I take it from this that they're abandoning iWork on the desktop and they're going to want to force all all application kind of stuff to the cloud. Seems to be moving that way. Uh, we'll see if they come out with an update for the actual apps, but you know, with the, the Mac App Store and stuff, it, it's, I have a hard time believing they're going to abandon it altogether, uh, at least for now. So iOS, very exciting about iOS. Seven. The biggest, most positive updates of the show can come from on the yeah. iOS 7 front. Of course, it was the last thing to be announced as well. Yeah, and they spent a lot of time. By the way, one thing I would say just about the actual presentation this year, yeah. I liked it. Oh, we've got our we've screen, got screen saver, saver coming on. Uh, I liked it because they didn't focus as much on kind of, uh, you know, flaunting how much more awesome they were than everybody else for half an hour up front before getting to the meat. Almost the entire thing was meaty. I mean, they were yeah. showing us features, even the stuff we weren't that interested in. They, were, mm -hmm. they did a good job of prevent, presenting the features and the benefits, what and I really like that. What they did instead of flaunting all of the stats and everything up front like they tend to do is show us some robots, which of course I love. That's right. <laughs> it's a robotics and uh, AI company called I don't have it in my notes here. I forgot what, what it was, was called. What was it called? Ant, Andy, um, guys, anybody? I don't remember what it was called. Nobody. But it reminded Andy me. or something like that. I'll have to. We'll put it in. We'll put it in the comments below. It reminded me of the little ga game where you drive your car around the track, you squeeze the handle, and yes. you can fly it off the track if you go too fast. <laughs> All right. It was like that. It was pretty awesome. Uh, so they're going to have some apps in, uh, available pretty soon. Uh, but back to iOS 7. Mm -hmm. uh, flatter design. What does that mean? Flatter layered. design means layered. Layers. And I like the way that um, it used the device's motion sensors to give a 3D effect and move the, the layers around on the screen as you move the device. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That looks very cool. Uh, they showed a lot of animation within apps like weather and stuff, which I don't personally find necessary, but uh, people dig it as a cool factor. Yeah. Look, look what my phone can do. There are know? a lot of great weather apps out there already, <laughs> but hey, I guess if you want if you want it built into your OS. To me, I don't like it when they build in apps to the OS. Because for all those people, there are a lot of people who don't want a weather app. They don't care about the weather like that. You can't delete it. Yeah. I, I hate apps 
on my device. I don't care if it's iOS, Android, or anything else. I hate apps that cannot yeah. be deleted. There are apps that, if that happens, I will just move them to the screen that I care le least about. I and make put a, them folder in a folder yeah. called "Do Not Not Use" or something, and I drop them all <laughs> Never there and open then move this. it to the end <laughs> because so, you can't delete them. So. so the whole the whole 3D layering thing, 3D parallax effect, um, I think is the biggest change for iOS 7. Um, also, they uh, released uh, Control Center. So Finally. You have the ability, just like on Android or other devices, um, where you swipe down to get all your controls mm -hmm. on iOS 7, huh? you swipe up. Blackberry. Yeah, uh, I, I mentioned this during yeah. the stream. It looks uh, a lot like Blackberry. Yeah. Um, you swipe to the right to get a left menu that comes out in a lot of different apps. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very Blackberry-ish and Android-like. Um, so the control In center one, swiping you, you up swipe from, up to get the control center. Yes, uh, and it does everything that basically all your the, settings and everything. It does everything that like Android four point do do, yeah. two does. You know, four you two four to, two. You <laughs> can you know turn your airplane mode on and off, adjust your brightness, yeah. things like that very quickly. I also like that it had, for example, the music player control was in there. Yeah. So if you have other things going on, if you're on a total, like if you're in Evernote and you've got music going in the background, you could swipe up and just the players right there, skip to the next song, swipe down and keep yeah. using your Evernote, you know, which is good. And you can do it on Android. So Definitely. this is good catch up stuff. Yeah. Uh, also, multitasking? Yeah, multitasking for all apps. Yeah. Also, the uh, phone, the camera, the camera photo app. Thing. You just couldn't wait to get to that one because you're so excited about it. That was really good. It reminds me a lot of Picasa, the way it or automatically kind of organizes your photos by place or date, etc. I like that. It's yeah. a very, very nice interface, and it will beat the heck out of the current gallery. That is this endless stream that you it's very hard if you have it a lot is. of photos it's very hard to find things it is so i really am looking forward to that yeah siri has been updated couldn't so, care less uh, for those of you who love and use siri does uh, it, are there you, any of you who love and use siri yeah there are still some people are who there, use siri does siri work for you <laughs> so okay. uh, we actually have an audience member who uses siri now okay. what's interesting about this is they are working with a lot of manufacturers to bring siri into the dash of your car uh, so i i like that but although full integration and you know everybody using that years out but yep. uh, one thing that was cool that piqued my interest about this Siri update is the fact that um, it you can do it can control features on the phone or capabilities of the phone like yep. turn up brightness or turn down turn on brightness, Bluetooth turn on turn Bluetooth. off Bluetooth that is key to something like that. What I also think Siri needs not only Siri but like the voice activation uh -huh. services on all these mobile platforms is they also need the ability to trigger macros. So for example, when your iPhone is down to 17% and you're like, oh God, you should be able to tell Siri, save battery. Right. And when you say save battery, it turns the brightness to 20%, turns off Bluetooth, turns off, you know. Uh, automated, automatic updates on your apps, yeah, it, like it yeah. turns off everything. It should basically go, okay, I'm going to try and last as long as I can now. Right. Uh, that would be a macro function, you know, and yeah. so I'd like to see that happen. Oh, Robert pointed out it was Antsy, yeah. Uh, uh, something like I don't that, think um, it's Ant C. I think it's Anzi or so, something, something like that. Something, but anyway, that. yeah. Oh, that was the robotics company. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, automatic updating of apps from the App Store. Oh, boy, Brr. you're going to hate that. I hate that. Hate, hate, hate. So here's the thing, guys. Uh -uh. Last, <laughs> last week, I picked up her phone. I was trying to download something for her. I can't remember what. I picked up her phone, and I looked, and it said she had like 47 apps needing updates. I was like, what I in update the... update the apps I use. I was like, what in the hell? This is actually a security risk. I know. And I didn't even ask her, but I hit update all. And uh, she nearly and lost her mind. I was okay? really pissed at you because... She was like, it's going to change all my settings. I'm no, like, it, it doesn't does. change it any does settings. It does, actually. When I... Uh, notification settings in Twitter... Uh, I forget the other two apps it was doing specifically. It but might have happened I, to you like once. No, no, it, it happens happen on every a multiple. Time. Yes, every time I update specific apps, I get notifications that I never wanted in the first place that I turned off when I had it. 
Anyway, and it just drives me insane. You don't want it updating automatically your apps? I do not. I want to do that myself. I, I'll on tell a timeline what, that I choose. What worries me about it, but I'm sure they'll give you like some control, like update only over Wi-Fi. Right, they have to give you that control. But the thing is, they need to do. They need to also go to things like update only on Wi-Fi and only when plugged in. Right. Because so maybe you don't want, or maybe like me, I don't care. We have enough bandwidth mm -hmm. on our thing. I don't care if it's Wi-Fi or 4G or whatever. Yeah. But but if I'm trying to use it. Pause the downloads in the background and let me use it. If it if it builds in a little bit of control and some yeah. intelligence, I'm okay with it. I do update my apps daily. Wow. Literally every day I check to see if there are updates. And, and that's I say the update. way you should do it. Don't get me wrong. That's the way you should do it. I uh, am like most of the world and do not do that daily. I don't know that most of the world doesn't update them ever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what else was there? There was something uh, else come cool out. than so iOS, iOS 7. 7 will Music. Come out. Hold on. iOS 7 will come out in uh, the fall. So, but then music is not an iOS 7 specific thing, uh, but iTunes radio. That's what I'm talking about. Is what you're talking about. So. I am anxious to see that. This would be their Pandora killer. Um, so, you have the ability to listen to music, teach it your likes, your dislikes, let it learn you and your um, preferences, and then also buy the songs that you're listening to while you're listening to the them. The bad news is I won't be able to use it on Android devices or anything else. I mean, that's one of those things where you're locked in to their platform yep. and they're not going to open it up. But yep. you can use it on PCs because of uh, they have iTunes on PCs. And sure. so they, he said it would work in iTunes as well as everything else. But there's no iTunes for Android. No, there is not. And there probably won't be an iTunes radio right. app for Android. So, so, yeah. You can't get rid of Pandora or Spotify or any of that yet. This will be free and ad supported. Uh, of course, they want you to buy, so there are buy buttons everywhere. Um, I think they should release an Android free. version of it. Of course they should, Why but they're they? not going to. Um, it is free, it's ad free with iTunes Match subscription. So, I forget what iTunes Match is. How much is. does iTunes Match cost, Ken? 24, okay. 25 dollars a year. 25, 25 bucks a year. a year. So, you know. Well, that's, that's the same as Pandora costs, 25 hey. bucks a year. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, ad free that. for 25 bucks a year. I guess yeah, I can you do know, that. I think that's worth paying for when you when you listen to a lot of music. I personally, you know, pay for subscriptions to like Spotify Ooh. and Pandora and stuff. I wonder if Sonos will build in, surely Sonos will add in the iTunes oh, radio I'm sure support they will. I'm sure they to will. one of their future releases. Yeah. Huh? Sonos what? Yeah, yeah. but it, I, it works with like an iTunes library. Um, so if you have it an depends iTunes, on yeah, you they'll know, probably have to release an update for They'll this. have to have an update to add it in, but they're good about adding new yeah. services, so hopefully they'll all right, and that is the wrap-up for WWDC 2013. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know what you think. Um, leave comments below, and we'll be uh, checking in, and I don't know. We'll, we'll see as things actually get released. Again, keep in mind, this is the developer conference, so developers get first hands-on, and they get to tweak and play with stuff that they're their own. Um, we'll hear more from them about how it's all working, I'm sure. Yep. All right, All right, guys, have a good one. We'll see you later. Thanks, guys. I'm Callie Lewis. I'm John P. Bye-bye.